Hey folks, this is Dave from Not So Ancient Chinese Secrets and DQ Studios, and I'm here to take a look and comparison of the physical bodies of the Nikon D750 and the Nikon DF. It's Retro Babe and the brand new 750. Now, as far as the size is concerned, the height is almost identical, and so is the width. If you put these side by side, they're almost exactly the same width. But that's where the similarities kind of end. If you take a look at the side profile now, you'll notice one big difference. And the big difference is the bigger grip on the 750. Now the DF was made for those who wanted a more retro feel. It doesn't even do video recording and you have all the manual control dials up top here. But one thing that you'll notice that everything is a little bit blockier. So the cuts are always square and you've got a little bit more of a FE look from the old film camera days than a new camera body that you've seen from Nikon and are familiar with from the last decade. Now, why does this matter? If you put your hand around the grip, I'm gonna spend a lot of time explaining the grip here because as a wedding photographer, this matters to me a lot. Um, the grip on the DF is very narrow. And even though I don't have big hands, I find that it's quite uncomfortable to grip and be knowing that I'm gonna be secure with it. One reason is because it's narrow. Another reason is because this pleather, it's not real leather, it's like some kind of synthetic, I think, is a little bit slippery. The back here by the thumb rest is the same rubber material that you'll find on the D750 and the rest of the Nikon DSLR line. But the front section has this pleather stuff. And I, I find that because the grip isn't very deep, you've gotta have like this, you know, a little bit of insecurity, a little bit of a Kung Fu grip to make sure that you don't drop the sucker. Now, the other thing I don't like about the DF grip and never have is this piece right here. It feels really plasticky. I don't know what it is, but it feels like plastic. It doesn't really inspire confidence. And for something that you're always touching as a photographer, I don't know why they made it out of this material or made it look so chintzy. <laughs> the rest of it, the metal, looks the same as the paint on the D750, which is nice and matte, like a little bit grippy and not, and not, not plasticky at all. But this little piece here, not really a fan. Now, take a look at the actual material they use and the pleather here does scuff. And for pro use, this has never been abused, but that's just fingernails here from gripping the camera. And the top here, we've never dropped the camera, but just regular wear and tear, you're gonna scuff that fake leather stuff. We've been using the uh, rubberized grip system on the D700s since 2008 with no issues. And we know that the rubber grip surface stands up to wear and tear. Now, another thing that I really, um, think that they should have thought out more on the retro design of the DF is the placement of the camera strap lugs. You'll notice that this camera strap lug is right where your index finger has to decide, you know, do I want to rest it here or do I want to put it on my shutter or do I need to reach over here and they put the sub command dial, this rotating dial in the front a little bit further from my reach than even the shutter button here. And that's gonna be obscured, that reach is gonna be obscured by that camera lug. So Nikon, what were you thinking? <laughs> it's kind of a weird place to put that lug. Now, if you take a look at the same system and the same grip on the D750, they've solved a lot of these issues. One, the grip is much wider. So even putting my hand on it, you'll notice that it's much nicer to hold and I'm much more secure just with three fingers. Whereas this one, I'm not. Why? Not just the width, but if you take a look right underneath that red line, you've got an overhang here. And that lets your third finger rest and cradle the body or the grip really nicely and securely. And because of the rubberized grip versus the plastic or the uh, leather grip, it is a little more secure and you've got more grip onto that, literally. Now take a look at the top here and I complained about the lug being in the way. They put that in the back here. And so you've got free control of your index finger on your shutter, on your sub command dial that's right underneath the shutter. There's no need to reach in past the shutter to get there. And you've also got your record button and all that jazz too. So kudos to them for making a much, much better grip on this baby. Now let's move our attention to the front of the camera. And on the front, you'll notice that they look very similar. They both have these two customized buttons, the function button and the preview button, but the positioning has changed. Both of the function buttons are down below to uh, right by your grip there, so right there. Now, the preview button has moved. On the DF, it's quite a bit lower than on the D750. Why does that make a difference and what were these gonna be used for? You can click on the link below to check out 
how we set up the menus in the DF, but one thing that we like to do is we like to program the FN, the function button, to be an autofocused on button. And why do we do that? I found that because my grip was so insecure with the DF, and just for better handholding uh, stability, I like to grip the camera with my left hand here. And if you have your index finger underneath the lens, then you can have your third finger right on the autofocus on, the function button here. Or you could put your index finger right on there, and you can squeeze the camera just like this. And what's cool about this, what it also adds, is that when you're pressing against your eye to take a picture, it adds stability because you've, you're pushing against your eye, you've got the autofocus on here, and it just releases your right hand to take the picture with the shutter button. So I really like using it that way. And I found that I was using a lot less back button focusing. Um, is, and we dis oh, I should make a note that we also take off the focusing from the shutter all the time. We always use their back button to focus, all right? So that's what I use that one for. And so we're gonna do the same thing for the D750. We're gonna program that one to be an autofocus on, okay? Now the second button, the preview button, we program as a kill flash. Anybody who knows our work knows that we like to shoot with a lot of off-camera flash. Well, sometimes we'll wanna quickly wanna take a shot without flash, and that's gonna be for testing exposure as well as to get a separate look, to make it dark, and just to get an ambient uh, image in, without the flash work. So to really quickly do that without turning off the flash or dismounting a, a, a transmitter is to press and hold the PV button and then we can shoot without flash as much as we want. Very cool. Well, with the DF, the PV button is quite low and I find that I was always kind of stretching a lot. If I had my back button focus or I had to do the kill flash and then I'd hit the shutter, it's quite a bit of stretch here. And on the D750, I much prefer the position of the PV button to kill flash, because as you know, if I just grip the camera, that PV button is right by my third finger already. I don't have to reach down to get it. And so I, I can kill the flash, shoot, 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 shoot. My thumb already rests on the button that I can program to be autofocus on, and I am good to go. So ergonomically, love, love, love the grip on the 750 so far. Now, if we take a look at the, the other side, the left side of the camera body, we are missing the PC sync uh, input here. Uh, and I'm not gonna miss that, to be honest, because I never used it. Uh, with the new age radio triggers that we have available to us, there's really not a lot of need for that anymore. Uh, this one does have a built-in flash, which we're gonna tape down. We're not gonna use that at all. But um, if you did wanna just buy one camera, this has a built-in flash, but it does so well in high, so I don't know why you'd use that. I'm just gonna take it down. Okay, now let's move along to the top, because there are some obvious differences here. And on top of things, I am going to miss the dials, and especially the ISO dial on the DF. Now, in this day and age of digital photography, I have no idea why we only have the shutter and the aperture controls instantly accessible to us because the third variable, as we all know, is the ISO. And so we should have an instant physical controller for ISO on all digital cameras, I think. And this one is pretty close. You just put your thumb, while I'm shooting, I can put my thumb down on that little release button and I can rotate the dial and change the ISO at will. And I kind of liked hearing that physical click so I knew exactly how many stops I was changing it. So I, I love, love, love having a dedicated ISO dial. To bring it to the 21st century, it would be nice to, for them to add a rotating, another com a secondary command dial on the left side so I could have shutter, aperture, ISO on this side. That would be wonderful. Even if it's a, a, a subcommand dial that you've got to press in and toggle, that'd be awesome because then I could instantly access all my variables that would change my exposure. But alas, I cannot. Thankfully, um, we'll have another video that has the setup for the D750 in the menu settings. You can program the movie record button to become an ISO changing button. So you press and hold, and then you can rotate the command dial and change your ISO. From the days that we shot the D4, we did that and we loved that, so that's not bad, but a dedicated um, option for that would be even better, I think. So, I will miss that. I won't miss this exposure conversation because I shoot fully manual. I probably will miss a little bit this dedicated shutter dial. It's only in full stops, but it's kind of nice to have a dedicated shutter dial when you have time to think about it. But often, probably about you know, 75 to 80% of the time, we're, we use it on the one-third step, which means the back command dial becomes our shutter, and that's what we are gonna be using on the 750 as well, okay? 
Now, moving on, we are going to take a look at the back. And the back, uh, not a lot is exciting about the back. Yeah, there's some differences, like the info button's not down here, it's up here. We now have a live view switch from movie mode, which you can't record movies on the DF, boo-hoo, boo-hoo. And also live view for stills. Um, and they've, they also, probably the most important thing is the fact that uh, we are missing an autofocus on button here. It's only a single button, the AE lock, AF lock. And like I said, we disconnect the shutter from autofocus and we use our back button to focus. But this isn't really a problem to me because I always found that this button was a little too close, especially on the DF. If, because of the small grip, my thumb never naturally went here. It's gotta bend quite a bit to get to the autofocus on button here. Now, it more, um, it more consistently rested on the AE lock, AE um, autofocus lock button here. So on the DF grip, if I, if I just grab the camera naturally, the AE lock, AF lock button is right there and I can program this to be my autofocus on instead and that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm not really missing out on that button. Now the coolest part about this is the LCD screen and ooh, look at this. Now you can do this, this is gonna be great if I wanna take low waist level shots like the old medium format cameras, I can look down on it and shoot from the hip, or I can do the Hail Marys, raise it up, and shoot uh, above crowds and things like that too, really nicely. And uh, the one thing they didn't do, and I don't know why, it goes to this angle, but uh, a third of the screen is obscured because of the angle here. I'm not sure why they let it go this way, but it doesn't go all the way. And that means you can't take the ultimate video or still selfie. Now, one thing that I am concerned about with the D750 is the fact that the LCD does articulate and this little tiny ribbon, I'm not sure if you can see that in there, is the one link between the body and the LCD. And even in the manual, it does say, do, 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 be very careful, don't touch this thing, be very careful, it might break kind of thing. Or, well, not might break, but be very careful. So they claim that this is as weather sealed as the 810. Um, and the one concern I have is because the LCD moves and because there's that little ribbon, uh, attaching it that it won't be quite as robust, but we'll, I, I hope my concern is not justified and that Nikon has done their testing and engineering and that that will not be a concern. But I am gonna like having the fact that it does rotate and stuff like that. And of course, I love the fact that I can record video for videos like this. Awesome, yeah. Let's move on. Now the last part we haven't taken a look with at is the bottom of the camera. And it seems very unsexy, but one big gripe I had with the Nikon DF camera, believe it or not, was the battery door. Now why? Because the slightest touch, the battery door would pop off. And it was so bad that every time I change a battery, even in my house, I dropped one of these guys and I go, don't! And then Quinn would know exactly, oh, he must be getting gear ready because he dropped the battery door. And I have to go find it on the ground in my crowded room and it was just never any fun. Sure, it pops back on very quickly and sure, it still works with the battery, uh, without the battery door, but come on, Nikon, you don't need to make it so the battery door pops off so easily. You can make it more secure than that. Take the Nikon D750, or like any other Nikon camera that I've ever held, it won't pop off very easily, although it can because you can add a grip, no problem. But yeah, I don't know why this thing falls off so easily. It's just so annoying and uh, makes me very nervous whenever I have to change the batteries or the SD card because you've got one, you've got one door that covers both the SD and the battery here. This one, you've got a battery compartment down below and you've also got the side compartment for the SD slots. And some people make a big deal out of having two SD slots versus one. I don't really care. I, it is gonna be nice, but I'm gonna use it in overflow mode, but people say, Dave, what about you know backup and all that jazz? You know what, why stop at two? Why don't we have three slots or four slots or five slots? You know what, um, if the error of the camera happens before the write to the card, you're gonna have two bad copies. You're gonna have two bad copies going to two separate cards. So the better insurance is to A, have multiple cameras, B, have multiple shooters. Because if you're relying on one camera to do everything for you without errors, you might be in trouble for a once in a lifetime event, like a wedding. All right, so that's why we always shoot together, me and Quinn, and we shoot with four cameras between the two of us. Anyways, um, I'll get off my soapbox. But yeah, I only also use, I should note, um, 
our recommended SD cards um, are recommended because we only shop and buy from reputable stores, so they're not fakes from China or whatever, or they might be made in China anyways, but not fakes from China. And two, we only use um, a particular brand, in our case, SanDisk, which has never failed us, or when they have, like over a decade ago, we could recover the images, and that's gonna be more important. And the rest of it is really gonna be user error. If you write over your cards, nothing can help you. And so really, get a really bulletproof system for backing up, and you'll be solid. And that is, the conclusion of our quick look at the physical differences between the Nikon DF and the Nikon D750. Now, we're going to have other videos, and after I put this to its paces and do some image quality tests, we'll see how well they do. Uh, the DF, the reason why we love these so much was because they put the Nikon D4 sensor in it, and that was the low light king. It's 16 megapixels, it's a really good resolution and size for wedding photography. Um, we don't really need to go to the 24 megapixels, but this does have a better focusing cam. So I'm really excited to see you know, how they compare in that regard, but ergonomically wise, for a professional shooter, I'm not really so much into the retro of all this stuff, although I am gonna miss that ISO dial and listen up all you manufacturers. Everybody should have a dedicated ISO control from here on in. Um, but uh, I do love holding and handling the Nikon D750 a whole lot better. So for pro use, day in, day out, hours and hours of holding, D750, I like you like. Thanks for watching, I'm gonna have links below. We're gonna have a blog post with a lot more videos and a lot more information. And happy shopping, God bless.